everybody welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today today is an exciting video um, I have to share with you as you can tell by the title this is a collaboration video with Karina from lifting pins and needles you must of course check her video out as well um, we had decided to do this collaboration um, and if you've watched my previous video where I'm planning for a business slash vacation um, that's coming up next month, you know on my plans for that, the Hollyoke um, was the dress, one of the um, pieces I wanted to make for that trip. And it's done. It is done early, but it is done. So this collaboration couldn't have come at a better time. Thank you, Karina, again for... Um, doing this this is awesome 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 and be sure like i said after you watch the video please go show karina some love and check her video out as well check out her um her dress and you'll see some of the different things that she have done i will say um, she also has in her video, she will be talking about lining the bodice for the Hollyoaks. So make sure you check that out. You know, Karina does an awesome, awesome job with showing different techniques and how she hack patterns and how she uh, modified them to her personal liking. And so make sure you definitely go check her video out um, after you watch this video and give our videos a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> this was definitely fun. So I am so excited to come in today with my review. Let's jump in. First, what am I wearing? I am wearing Me Made, actually, everything I have on. This is the uh, Style So Me Madison cardigan that I modified. I've showed that in a previous video. This is the, actually, a cashmere, the Springfield top that I have on up under this. This is the Springfield top. And actually, I will link to this video here. I did a video showing how I adjusted for um, the gaping neckline. And I believe the sloping shoulder as well. So um, that was one of the adjustments I had to make on the Springfield top. So um, I will link that up here. Go check that out. Um, if you have gaping in your neckline or you have sloping shoulder issues with your tops, I, I walk through and show how I made that adjustment for here. But let's get into this cashmere um, pattern. So this cashmere pattern is the Hollyoak Maxi Dress. And I'll just pop up a picture. Um, it is for sizes 12 through 28. And it is for cup sizes C through H. And this particular pattern is designated as Advanced Beginner. And so this is definitely a great, great pattern for those. It's definitely a great summer dress. And for those who want to get into um, sewing uh, different types and styles of cashmere patterns, this is definitely one to go for. So let me just jump right into some of the things, uh, my review for the, um, for the pattern. Let's talk about the sizing. Um, as I told you, the sizes go from 12 to 28. I did a bust 22 cup GH. And the GH is definitely to give, I need more room there. And then I graded from a um, 22 to the 26 at the top of that to uh, um, accommodate for the 26 that I cut out in the bottom part of the um uh, of the pattern. And so what I will insert here now is me talking through, and it's just a really short clip, um, talking through how I trace and grade between sizes. So I'll go ahead and insert that here. You can see here, this is bodice piece. I'm cutting for the GH cup. And so I need to grade from a 22. I'm using a 22, but I'm going to a 26 at the hip so <clears throat> how I do it and I hope you can see this but I take my curve ruler and just look to see what the curve is for the 22 so that's my curve for the 22 this is the lengthen and shorten line so what I'm going to do is if I can swing this over I'm going to kind of start where that curve I'm sorry, where that uh, length and short line is and go here. So I'm gonna kinda go here, allow it to do a nice little curve all the way out to the 26. So I don't have any issues with connecting this to the waist piece. So I will show you and I'll um, 
trace everything else out as normal and I draw my grain line right away um, but I'll be right back okay so I'm all traced out here here's where I went out to the 26 see as long as down at the bottom at the 26 and this looked you might need to round it out just a little bit and I just use a, a pointy pen for tracing for the most part sometimes I use a pencil sometimes I use a pointy pen like this but that's how I do it hopefully that makes sense okay so hope that was real short and simple but I just wanted to show how I did grade between sizes and I did trace off all of my um, bodice pieces actually I traced off all the the bodice pieces and the skirt pieces when I did the top because I muslin this first and I'll show you that in a top version first and then when I did my final version I did the full skirt and so when I did the skirt and I'll show that um, momentarily uh, I have a, a little short clip and tip on how to shorten your patterns um, because the dress the skirt piece of the holly oak is way too long for me um, and my liking I wanted something that hit around my knee area and so I do have a clip and I'll show that shortly um, of how I shortened it but you'll notice I actually cut the actual pattern for that and so you all know if you saw my if you been sewing in my beginner to advanced sewing tips I, I encourage um, tracing patterns but for this for the dress version I actually cut the pattern uh, for one I know I more than likely won't wear this particular style that long um, ever uh, but also because I printed off the holly oak pattern just for those just a little side note here if you print off um, cashmere patterns um, and you decide to print off all of the cup sizes you will get the skirt pieces so for every cup size grouping obviously it includes the skirt pieces so I printed off all the cup size variations so I got the skirt parts three different times because <laughs> there's three different sets right for those different um for those different size ranges. So I have the skirt pieces three different times. So technically I could have just cut up um, one of the skirts um, one time, but I decided to trace it the bottom for the um, top version. And then I just went ahead and just cut the regular version. So I do have a traced off version already for the um, top. So I will say just so um, you are aware, this pattern, while it is advanced beginner, um, there are a ton of pieces. There are 16 pieces for this. And it's mainly because you have the princess cut seams and I will be sure that I'm popping up the line drawings here from the pattern. You do have those, um, the, the um, princess seams. Um, so you have different pieces there for front and back. And then you also have those waistband pieces um, as well. And of course the, the, the straps, the front and back strap. And so um, you definitely have quite a few pieces. So this is one of those that, oh, I'm just going to whip this up in hours. Not one of those type of patterns. <laughs> you will need to have quite a few uh, pieces cut out. And if you do decide to line it, you have to take that in consideration. So you'll be cutting that bodice out twice, essentially. So let me get into my... Um, my muslin fabric and I'll talk about um, the instructions as I'm, I'm going through it. So what I use for my muslin and I will pop up some pictures here shortly but what I use for my muslin was this beautiful fabric. If you remember I got this in the I won the Minerva hamper um, in the challenge that I was in earlier this year and so that's what I used but I didn't have enough and I will say I almost got I will say for a top version of the Hollyoke I would say, and I told you what size I cut out, you can get away with a yard and a half of fabric with just doing a top version, a yard and a half, I kid you not. I will insert a little video um, showing you how I was able to get 14 pieces out of 40 inches of fabric. And the only reason um, I couldn't get the rest because I needed these side pieces. And... Um, all right, Karina, I was coming for your title of squeezing out 
um, pattern pieces on fabric. This is 40 inch, 40 inches long, 60 inches wide. I was only able to get out 12 pieces. These two will go on different fabric, a different color, which is fine because this is kind of my muslin, but the extra pieces will go on black. And of course, the interfacing pieces are cut out on interfacing, but I almost had it. I almost had it. Yeah, I needed these side pieces, so I had to use, I used linen and my front facing pieces, I had to use some black linen that I had in my stash. But I will say, uh, I didn't take this in consideration. I used the linen and this here, this is like a rayon chali. It's not the same weight, so it didn't cooperate. And you will see in the picture. So when, see how that's sticking out on the side. So I really should have just um, you tried to see if I had scraps. I didn't even think of that until after the fact, actually. But saw if I had some scraps of fabric this weight in order to do the, um, the facing piece and just this piece. But I didn't think of that when I was doing the muslin. So how did I decide to how much to lengthen this piece by, which is, you can call it the peplum piece. I measured down on me about how far I wanted to go and how much I wanted to cover. And so I thought it did a really good job um, with covering how much I wanted to cover. So that for me, I, I measured from the top of the skirt pattern piece. I did not take the seam allowance into consideration. I just figured having sewn cashmere patterns in the past I didn't bother with that if the, you're new to sewing cashmere or having sewn very many of hers you might want to take that seam allowance into consideration but I didn't because I knew about you know how her patterns are and she used half inch seam allowances so what I did was measure down from the top of the pattern piece down 10 and a half inches and I wanted to make sure my cutoff point was right below that um notch seam side seam so um because i still want to keep my notches so and that worked out perfect you'll see in the um in the video and the pictures i pop up where that sits on me and it was perfect i did not for my muslin put the any buttons on because again this was just a muslin i wanted to get the fit um what i can say and you will see in the pictures is that the fit actually was pretty doggone good the problem came in is because i used the wrong fabric not only did i use the wrong fabric to uh with this as part of my muslin but i used woven interfacing now it calls for woven interfacing but here's one of the things i've i've been learning with about interfacing and with interfacing is that for fabrics like this that's real drapey this chally is really it, i found now your experience can be different, but I have found using a knit interfacing to be much more um, cooperating with fabrics like this. So it's not, see how this is sticking out? That's with woven interfacing. So it's sticking, it's sticking out. I will show you with my final. I use um, on my final the knit interfacing. You will see the difference um, in a moment. So, but the fit was awesome. And back here stuck out. Cause again, the facing is a, um, the woven interfacing so it makes this a little too stiff so it's sticking out but the fit was awesome and the how did I know to choose a, a GH cup um, one because I'll reiterate I have so many cashmere patterns I've made the Upton dress several times I've made a couple of I made the Concord tee I've made a couple of the Springfields I've made um the Turner dress. So I, by now I'm kind of used to the drafting of cashmere patterns. So I know a GH cup for me gives me a lot of room, even though the sizing might show, um, I could have gone with the EF cup. I know for me, I got a, I got a lot of tissue. I got a lot of breast tissue. So, <laughs> so I need some of that extra room that that G cup would offer. So I don't have to worry about pulling anywhere in the front. So um, definitely muslin and take that in consideration. Um, so with this, I knew I was ready to go ahead and move forward. A, making sure that I use my knit interfacing and B, that I know I needed to shorten um, the pattern piece in order to um, get, get the fit that I want. 
And so let's see the final version. Okay, so I'm gonna start out first by showing you just a little video of me swishing around in it. And um, so you can see how the overall fit is and then I'll come back with some, um, some additional notes. So you saw uh, my husband did the video <laughs> for that for me. And so um, the fabric I use, this is, I've had this fabric in my stash at least three plus years. This was from Fabric Mart. I don't even have a swatch of this. This was probably before I started doing swatches of my fabric. And um, not until I got ready to use it. Um, did I figure out it was too thin? <laughs> it's very thin. Um, so I do have to wear a slip up under this for sure, for sure, or else you see everything. But um, in a black slip, uh, I need to wear. But so yes, yeah, so as long as I have on a slip, it is good. I did not use, if you saw my plans video for the Holly Yoke, I have purchased two um, linens and I was going to make the tops out of out of that linen well one of the linen seems a little itchy the other one I can still do the top out of and I very very well may do that but I will admit one of the things with the pattern because it is it is a time consumer and you do need to take your time I don't know if I, I, I'm gonna do it anytime soon <laughs> doing um, the the Holyo, uh top um, again uh, because it it is time consuming, so you do have to uh, budget your time for it. But needless to say, I love the final fit. I love how it turned out. Let me just show you. I decided to only do buttons at the top, not all the way down. Um, these are not functional buttons because that's one of the things about the pattern that you will notice is that you can choose to have a functional button placket or a non-functional. And so I chose for, obviously for my top, but for the dress to have non-functional. So I just put the buttons on. Let me show you my buttons, give you a close-up. These were in my stash. I already had these and I thought, perfect, I'll just put those on. Um... I intended on wanting to line um, the the uh, the bodice, but I thought I didn't have enough information for myself to do the lining, nor did I have the proper um, um, fabric to line it. So I just went with this, and so um, so there's not. So as you can, let me just try to show you a little bit of the details. So the gather, I love the gathering in the waist, in the back, that very flattering, very, very flattering. Um, I finished off the hem with bias binding, as you can tell. And oh, this was a beast, you guys. So this fabric is a polyester. This stuff does not iron well. <laughs> and so what was my friend in this was heat bond. Has anybody, I, I'm sure quite a few of you have used it, heat bond. What I had to do was, because this was just not cooperating, I had this, as you can tell, this is not sewn down. And no, I did not do a um, do uh, the blind hem hand stitching either. I used heat bond to put this down all the way around the hem. Um, it was just a mammoth of a task to even iron this down good and it just was not cooperating so I used the heat and bond to put this down and just took my time around the entire hem and so that's how I finished off the um the hem let me show you the inside I almost forgot to show you how to how I shorten so make sure you draw your grain line all the way down like you see here and then cut at the lengthen and shorten line. And then take your um, measuring tape and measure down about how far you want to go. And I actually, as you can tell, I lengthened some more my grain line. And you'll see the edges poking out when you shorten it. And you'll need to add paper there. So what I've done here is shown how I've added some paper and I've taped taped it down and I'm just trying to see how this line is going 
and then once again I will extend out my ruler to connect the top to the bottom and I'll draw that line so now the line is drawn I've connected it and then I will go ahead from there and cut this out so the inside um and as you can tell, my straps and everything fall beautifully. See what I mean by the using knit? It, it just, it just, I mean, the way I'm holding it, you can't tell that much, but it just lays better. Um, here's the back where I finish off the, um, the elastic and then the front band, as you can see, finishes off nicely. And so I surged everything um, on the inside of the garment. And so, um, so yeah, I'm very happy the way it turned out. As far as the instructions, the instructions are very, very, very clear. It can get tricky. Let me tell you where I got a little hung up on was attaching the uh, front facing and back facing the waistbands, not the facing pieces, but the waistband. I will say on my, and it's probably because of the fabric I chose, I did have issues with the facing piece on my top, but again, I didn't have the facing issues on this, so I know that was the fabric choice um, because I mixed fabrics, um, that linen with that other one to do the facing, and that did not uh, work out. And uh, also well with all. the um, instructions, the pictures in here are very helpful. So if you get a little hung up on um, the, the, the written instructions, the um, actual pictures do kind of help lay out what the next steps are. Um, I highly recommend, this is one of the other things that I've done, because there are so many pieces, list all your pieces on the, on the post-it note. That's what I do, and I just cross them off as I trace them off. That way you have everything and everything, all your pieces, I highly recommend label, label, label with whether you use a post-it note, a, a piece of tape or something, label your front and back strap pieces. On my muslin, my strap pieces, I put on backwards. So the strap pieces are supposed to curve on your shoulder, but mine curve outward instead of inward and so <laughs> make sure you label label all of your pieces label all of your bodice pieces so you just know um what piece is what and know how to attach them at least for the most part with when you're doing princess seams like this you don't have to worry about darts because everything is built into that princess seam and if you have to take out or make an adjustment you can make that in the princess seam area so that will help out a lot there's not a lot more on the instructions, I would say I do the the last recommendation I have in regards to the 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 band front band pa facing piece in her instructions, uh, Jenny mentions to uh, cut down the facing piece because um, eventually you will fold that down to attach it on the inside where it looks clean like it does. Uh, I recommend not doing that, and this is just for me. See, this This is the piece I'm talking about. Once you fold it down, you fold this under and then you're supposed to hand stitch. I, I, don't, I didn't hand stitch anything. <laughs> this was, um, this one I, yeah, I kind of tried to do a stitch in a ditch. Um, the top or part of the top, I want to say I might've used seam bond or something. Um, but I recommend not cutting it. So when you fold it under, you still have enough uh, fabric to fold in the event you did something wonky and attaching it at the top. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is this piece here, you have to fold, you attach it up and you fold it down once you attach the skirt to hide that seam on the inside. Um, she's saying like, like cut off a portion of that, like a quarter of an inch. I wouldn't do that. I would, I would save all of that because you just never know where you might go a little wonky up here and you find that you don't have enough fabric to fold under to hide. So um, just just save that. Don't, don't cut it off. You can always cut it off later if you want to before you attach it, but I don't. It doesn't leave any bulk by you leaving it. So, and again, that will depend on your fabric choice, but um, yeah, I would just leave that. But yeah, outside of that, that is it. That is it. I'm so happy with it. It's a wonderful, beautiful fit. 
perfect dress. I will be taking it on my trip next month. And so, yeah, that's all I have. So that is it. Make sure you go check out Karina's video, Lifting Pins and Needles. I will leave um, a link to her channel or the video if I have the link down below. So you can go ahead and check her out or I'll leave it in the iCards okay, here. Okay, well. that is it, everybody. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Don't forget to tune in on Sunday. I will have the reveal of my final skirt block and the uh, skirt that I created from my video from Sunday. And once again, if you have not caught it, make sure you catch my haul. I had a haul video um, that went up just two days ago on Tuesday. Have some fun stuff in there that I share. So make sure you go and check that out as well. And finally, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Please thumbs up this video and um, just tune in. I have quite a few fun videos coming up for you. But again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And you all have a blessed rest of your week. Bye.